Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Routes Learning Series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Freeware Railways of Devon and Cornwall routes, which is available from the Train Sim Designs website. I'm going to post a link to where you can download this route in the video description. So the Railways of Devon and Cornwall routes is actually a network of routes that expands on the original Riviera line from Exeter to Paynton, which was released by Dovetail Games. In this video, I'm going to be driving along the Avocet line, which is the route between Exmouth and Exeter. We're going to be following the real life timetable of train 2 Echo 52, which is the 1941 Great Western Railway service from Exmouth through to Exeter St David's for a total journey distance of around 11 and a quarter miles. Our stops along the way include Limpston Village, Topsham, Newcourt, Digby and Salton, Exeter Central, and finally Exeter St David's. The train that I'm driving on this journey today is a class 143 Pacer diesel multiple unit. I have covered videos on the Pacer units in the past on this channel in the form of the Armstrong Powerhouse class 142, however I realise that I'm yet to have covered a video in the class 143 and this is the perfect route to run this train on. So the class 143 um, has been in service since 1985 and was constructed between 1985 and 1986 by Hunslet Barclay and Walter Alexander. A total of 25 of these units were produced with 23 still in service and two of these units scrapped both due to fire damage. They have a maximum capacity of 122 seats. Each unit weighs around 48 and a half tons and they have two engines, one per coach. So the prime mover is one Cummins LTA-10-R um, rated at 230 horsepower or 170 kilowatts, giving a total power output from the prime movers of 460 horsepower per unit. The engine type is a six cylinder, 10 liter diesel engine, giving a maximum power output of 225 horsepower or 168 kilowatts. These units have a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour, though the maximum speed limit on this journey today will be 60 miles per hour. Now in the cab of the unit, there's just a very few things that I need to do here to set up ready for departure. Unfortunately, the Class 143 doesn't have some of the more advanced features that are simulated on other units within Train Simulator. So the first thing I'm going to do here now is just to move the reversing handle into the forward position with the W key and then reset the AWS TPWS self-test sequence. Now that I've done that, I'm going to press H to turn on the headlights, and that puts them straight into the daytime setting and also turns on the marker lights at the same time. You can't actually uh, activate the headlight and marker light switches independently in this unit within Train Simulator. Now if we go around here to the left hand side, I'm just going to turn the panel light switch here on, which turns on the... Um, the instrument lights in front of us, but I do find with the class 143 that the instrument lights are actually rather bright and as a result of that it can be difficult to read the number on the speedometer. Uh, thankfully I know where the positions of the various numbers are, so I shouldn't be speeding on this journey today. So in front of us here we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour. As already mentioned the maximum speed of this train is 75 miles per hour. If we now look to the left of the speedometer we've got the brake gauges there and so now if I apply the brakes which should have been applied to begin with you can see that the right hand needle there is climbing and the higher that needle is pointing then the harder the brakes are applied. And so we've actually got a standard West Code three-step brake on this unit and you can see the brake handle uh, directly to the bottom left of the screen. So you've got steps one, two, step three which is full service and then finally a fourth step which is emergency. I'm going to try and not go above step two braking on this journey today. I will say though that even though it was created by a different creator, the class 143 Pacer seems to have the same issues with the brake handle as the class 142 in that it's actually very 
very difficult to get the precise braking position that you want and often you'll apply the brakes and end up jumping straight up to step two or even full service when you don't intend to do so and also uh, conversely you might end up reducing the brakes more than you intend to do so so you do have to watch that when driving this train. In front of us here we've got a two-tone horn which because I've got the Armstrong Powerhouse class 142 pacer installed um, which applies the sounds from the class 142 to the class 143 is a two-toned horn controllable with the spacebar and the B key. Just to the right of the horn control there we've got the throttle control which is a standard British Rail seven-step power controller so generally when I start the train moving I'm going to try and go up to around step 3 of power and then gradually bring the notches up towards notch 7 as we get towards 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now that I've done that let's just see if the windows are openable on this unit and unfortunately they aren't. Couldn't actually remember if they were um, openable or not. So as I can't open the windows we've now had a look at everything that we need to look at in the cab for now. So let's take another look outside the train and then we can depart and head out towards Exeter St David's. Starting away from Exmouth, the starting speed limit here is 50 miles per hour, with around 2 miles to go to our first stop, which is Limpston Village. accelerate quite nice and quickly out of here and then as we get towards 50 miles per hour I'm going to cut the power back to notch 3 which holds us at around 48 and a half miles per hour and won't allow the train to accelerate further so I can use notch 3 as a little bit like cruise control. down to notch 3 of power and it should hold us now at this speed. As we approach this next crossing, which is the second crossing out of Exmouth, we've got just over one mile to go to our next stop. probably see here just how difficult it is to read the speed there and the speedometer needle looks almost invisible. I can just see it myself um, but I can certainly see how you may have problems in being able to read the speedometer when watching this video. In a moment the line is going to turn away slightly from the um, river mouth to our left hand side and then some houses are going to appear. We're going to cross an underbridge then and just after we've crossed the underbridge I'm then going to apply the brakes for our stop. Not quite sure why the uh, brakes are sort of going up and down there as they were. So I applied the brakes around the area of the underbridge. We're now coming into Limston Village Station. I'm aiming to stop around halfway along the platform, although the stopping points on this route are a bit of guesswork, as I can't really see many clear stop markers here. So I'm just going to stop just beyond the shelter there. Let's just try and reduce the braking for a more gentle stop.
Departing away from Limpston Village, the speed limit is still 50 miles per hour, with around 3 miles to go to our next stop, which is Topsham. the river mouth to our left hand side all the way to the other side you would actually reach the Riviera line or the Exeter to Plymouth line which is just the other side of the river mouth there and we're sort of running almost parallel as we head towards Exeter. Once again as we get towards 50 miles per hour I'm now going to cut the power back to notch 3 of power to maintain the speed here. Limpston Commando Station with around two miles to go. Shortly going to be coming up now on Exton Station with around one and a half miles to go. Most services along this route actually I think stop at every station, so I found it quite unusual that this service doesn't stop at several of these stations along the way. for now is the next signal which is a distance signal which indicates one mile to go and just under one mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed restriction. Now, I'm not quite sure why we have an adverse AWS warning there when the distance signal is in fact displaying a green proceed aspect. So in a moment we're going to be crossing a bridge at that point and then going to idle the power as we've got around half a mile to go to the upcoming 25 mile per hour speed restriction. So I've just idled the power at this point and then I'm going to apply the brakes up to step one on the next right hand curve. down to 25 miles per hour so I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point. We'll shortly be coming up on Topsham station which has a passing loop here to allow two trains to pass and indeed the signal at the end of the platform is currently displaying a red aspect. So I'm going to come into the platform here and I'm going to aim to stop at the end which looked like the correct stopping point and I'm going to aim to stop just before the signal disappears in the driver's window so that I can still see the signal clearly. And then we've got around a four minute stop here while we wait for another train coming in the opposite direction to pass us. Of course, I'm going to cut the stop time down in the video here. So we'll look at a couple of external shots of the, of the train and also look at um, some shots of the train coming in on the other platform.
departing Topsham, the starting speed limit here is 25 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Newcourt. Cut the power back slightly early there, just to ensure that we didn't break the speed limit, but I meant to do that closer to uh, 25 than 20 miles per hour. The speed limit has now gone up to 60 miles per hour, and we're starting on an upward gradient of around 1 in 105, which will in fact steepen to around 1 in 82 um, by the time that we reach our next stop. So along here now I'm going to accelerate up to around 50 miles per hour and then I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. And then I'll be looking out for an underbridge ahead. Once we reach that underbridge, then I'm going to apply the brakes into step one. And that should um, be a roughly the correct braking point for our stop at Newcourt Station. So now doing around 50 miles per hour, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast. And now I'm looking out for the upcoming underbridge. So we've just reached the underbridge here, I'm now going to make a step one brake application. And with the uphill gradient that we're currently on, that should aid in our deceleration as we slow down for the stop here. I can see the platform coming up now on the left hand side. Might be slowing down just slightly too early, so I've just released the brakes momentarily. I'm going to reapply it, I don't want to enter the platform any faster than 20 miles per hour. The brakes really are acting very strangely on this unit, and I really can't quite explain why that is. Um, they're sort of going up and down, up and down, and then at Topsham I actually had to reload the scenario because I couldn't release the brakes because I had a lot loss of pressure within the system. So here at Newcourt I'm aiming to stop just beyond the shelter there, around halfway along the platform. Departing away from Newcourt, the starting speed limit here is still 60 miles per hour, with around three quarters of a mile to go to our next stop at Digby and Southam. And because we started on a 1 in 82 upward gradient, um, I did apply power before releasing the brakes, just to ensure that the train didn't roll back here. Coming up soon will be a long underbridge. As we reach that underbridge, I'm then going to idle the power and I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as we reach the next overbridge, which I believe you can see coming up just ahead. So we've now reached the underbridge. I've idled the power to allow the train to coast. The gradient has shallowed here, so we're not going to be losing speed as quickly as we were before. brakes on for our stop. In fact, I'm not sure if we're slowing down quite quick enough. So I'll just increase the braking to step two for a moment. You can see the end of the platform just coming up and I don't really want to be entering any faster than 20 miles per hour. So now I've just brought the braking back down again. Here at Digby and Southern, I'm aiming to stop next to the platform shelter, just coming up on the right hand side. just pulling up slightly further. Now if I apply the brakes here, this should be roughly the correct place to stop.
departing away from Digby and Souton, the starting speed limit is still 60 miles per hour, with around three and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Exeter Central. As we get up towards 60 miles per hour, I'm going to cut the power handle back to notch 4 to maintain the speed as close to 60 as possible. What I'm looking out for now as a landmark is the next signal, which is a distance signal. That distance signal is two thirds of a mile from the upcoming home signal, which guards the routes that we're joining, which is the route from London Waterloo and Salisbury through to Exeter operated today uh, by South Western Railway, previously South West Trains. And there is a 40 mile per hour speed restriction coming into force in that same area. Now passing Polslow Bridge Station. At this point I'm now going to shut off the power completely. I'm going to prepare to apply the brakes to slow down for the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction. In fact I'm going to put the brakes on now just to ensure that our speed is down in time. I do need to take note here that we are operating under a single yellow signal so I don't want to uh, be driving too quickly to ensure that uh, I can stop at any potential red signals coming up. So we're now down to 40 miles per hour in time. I'm just going to bring our speed down slightly further as we're now starting on a downward gradient of 1 in 100, which will ultimately steepen to 1 in 81. So now I've just slowed us down to around 30 miles per hour and I'm going to allow the train to coast along here due to the adverse signals. The speed limit here is now 70 miles per hour, but there's no way we could get up to that even if the signals were clear between here and Exeter Central Station. As we reach the other end of this tunnel, I then need to prepare to brake for the upcoming signal, assuming that it's displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. that the brakes here is very quickly draining uh, the pressure from the system so um, it's really quite confusing what's going on um, but it's certainly causing major problems with my driving uh, on this journey we're now passing St James Holt station which I think it's called St James Park but um, for some reason on the map for this route it's listed as St James Holt. So the signal ahead has now jumped to a single yellow aspect, which means that we are now clear into the station at Exeter Central. At 
this point we've got around half a mile to go to Exeter Central Station. I've now idled the power at around 30 miles per hour. I'm just going to apply the brakes again slightly as the speed limit here is now dropping to 30 and will soon be dropping to 25 miles per hour uh, just the other side of the station here. So now just going to use the brakes for speed control to ensure that we don't break the speed limit here. And here at Exeter Central I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform which to me looks like it's probably the correct stopping point for this station. The gradient has now leveled out as we enter the station here and then once we depart away from Exeter Central and into Exeter St David's we've then got quite a long steep downward gradient until just before Exeter St David's station. So I'm going to aim to stop here just before the end of the roof on the left hand side. Departing away from Exeter Central, the speed limit here is 30 miles per hour with three quarters of a mile to go to our next and final stop at Exeter St David's. And the speed limit is soon dropping now down to 25 miles per hour. So I'm just going to accelerate up to 20 here and I'm going to shut off the power now just to allow the train to coast as we're now starting on a gradient of down one in 37, which is a very steep gradient on any railway and certainly one of the steepest gradients you'll find on any main line within Britain. The speed limit's just dropped to 25 miles per hour now. I'm driving with caution along here because although we had a green signal um, as we departed away from Exeter Central, I do know from the practice runs that even though that signal was green, the next signal was displaying a red aspect. So something's not quite right with the signalling there. And I want to ensure that um, I'm not going to go through a red signal. Indeed, you can now see the signal ahead is displaying a red. So I'm now going to brake to bring our speed down to ensure that I can stop for that signal in time if necessary. And the speed limit at this signal is dropping to 15 miles per hour, which will be the final speed limit for the remainder of the journey into Exeter St David's Station. Okay, so the signal's now jumped to a single yellow. I was crawling up to it in the hopes that I wouldn't have to stop. And so we've now got a 15 mile per hour speed limit. You can see with the steep gradient that we're on, we're actually accelerating quite quickly, but the gradient is going to level in a moment, which is why I'm now increasing the power just to bring our speed up towards 15. And now I've shut off the power at around 12 miles per hour. It looks like we're now not gaining any more speed, so we have now entered the level gradient here. You can now see the platforms coming up at Exeter St David's and I'm aiming to stop at the three car stop sign which is around halfway along the platform. Just to say that I will be doing another journey on this uh, freeware route soon um, just to show off a bit more of the network. That's going to be a run between Plymouth and Gunners Lake in a class 153 diesel multiple unit which is another train that I haven't yet covered on this channel. But I do plan on releasing a couple more uh, different videos between now and then, because I don't want uh, too many videos all in the same region, or in the same country for that matter, as I am planning on doing some German and American videos very soon. So now coming up on the three-car stop sign, 
I'm going to stop just in a moment as that reaches the left window. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. And so here we are, arrival at Exeter St David's. Thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. If you'd like to sponsor this channel, then please visit my Patreon link also in the video description. And finally, I have posted the link in the video description to where you can download this route from the TrainSim Designs website. Once again, thank you for watching.